they just drink and make a knot. This is not a knot in a mathematical sense, since we can untie it just pulling the string. Instead, if we join the ends, we capture the knot. Even pulling and bending the string, we cannot get rid of the knot. You can convince yourself that this knot is truly knotted playing with a piece of rope, but this is not enough to convince a mathematician. Later, we will give a mathematical proof that this knot is actually knotted. The type of the knotting remains the same during all these movements, called isotopies. To untie it, we would need to cut the string. It is forbidden to cut and rejoin the string, otherwise all the knots would be the same. We could untie every knot and make it round. Sometimes we will need to consider only a part of a knot, leaving the rest static. The string has two open ends, but it is put inside a ball, with the end points fixed on the surface of the ball. It is called tangle. We can move the string inside the ball without cutting it. The type of the knotting does not change. Yet, no part of the string can ever escape the ball, otherwise we could untie every tangle. Every time we draw open strings in this movie, we mean a tangle, even when we do not draw the ball in which it is contained. A knot is an object living in three space. This looks like a knot, but it is in fact just a two-dimensional picture on a screen. We are used to such a representation, it takes very little effort to interpret two-dimensional pictures as three-dimensional. The simplest way to make a two-dimensional picture of a knot is to take its shadow, its projection on a plane. A shadow is not enough to reconstruct a knot, but we can add information where the projection crosses by breaking the arcs that pass farther from our eyes. We call such a representation a broken arc diagram of the knot. To recover the knot, we simply join the arcs. Where an arc is broken, the string passes underneath. Another way to represent knots is to mimic geographical maps. In an elevation map, the colors are assigned to each point according to its altitude. The map is two-dimensional, but it is easy to turn it into a three-dimensional terrain model, since the colors encode the height of the points represented. We can use the same rule for knots. Choose a direction for the projection, that is, a direction to look at the knot. Some points of the knot are closer to our eye. Those are the high points, that are colored red. Medium height points will be yellow, and points with low elevation will be green. Now we draw the projection of the knot from the viewpoint. It is flat and where the string crosses it has different colors. Sometimes we will use a wider range of colors, using also the blue deep sea. These representations carry the same information and allow to reconstruct a 3D knot. To turn a colored projection into a broken arc diagram, we need to break the lower arc near its crossing. Then we can forget the color.
vice versa, we color the string yellow and red, and then join the broken arcs coloring them green or blue. Moving the string of a knot using isotopies, we can change its shape, but the knot remains the same. We want to decompose the movement in simple steps. We analyze what happens in the colored projection during such deformation. Here, two strands seem to repulse each other. Here, we smooth the curve. And here, we move a strand behind a crossing. We could continue in such steps, changing a tangle at a time. Most of the knot stays fixed, only the small part inside the tangle changes shape. These simple moves are called Reidemeister moves. We can also draw them in the broken arc diagram notation. Here is how they work. We replace a small disc looking like one side of the move with a disc looking like the other side. The moves allow to turn deformations, a topological concept, into sequences of steps, a combinatorial concept. These moves on diagrams are named after Eidemeister, the mathematician who, in 1927, published a proof that they described all the allowed deformations of knots. In fact, Alexander and Briggs had already published a paper containing the moves one year before Eidemeister, but the moves became known carrying just his name. When we draw a knot, we can choose different directions to project it, which will give different images. We can color the knot as in a colored projection and draw a broken arcs diagram. Not all viewpoints give us an understandable diagram. In this angle, three strands cross in a point. It is not clear which one is the lowest strand. Here, two strands touch in a point where they have the same direction. They seem to overlap for a short stretch. This tangle is similar, a strand is hidden behind the other. Here, a strand suddenly inverts its direction, making a sharp U-turn. All these situations are forbidden in a diagram, because they may be confusing. Luckily, they are really rare, and we can easily avoid them. If three or more strands cross in the same point, we can pull them apart. If two strands cross in a point where they have the same direction, we can pull them apart or straighten one of them. When a strand suddenly inverts its direction, we can turn it into a white bow. Now the diagram is clear and understandable. Let's look again at the tangles with the forbidden configurations. We have two ways of resolving a triple point, pulling a strand in one direction or the opposite one. If two strands have the same direction at a crossing point, there are again two ways of deforming the knots to avoid that.
Finally, also a U-turn can be straightened in two ways, becoming a white bow or a loop. Forget the singularities and look at the tangles on the two sides. They are the sides of the Reidemeister moves. The move in the second line can be obtained using move number 2, so we can discard it here. This is how Reidemeister theorem is proved. Its forbidden projection can be resolved in two ways, which are the sides of the moves. How many knots are there? How can we distinguish different ones? These look different, but are they really distinct? Which knots are truly knotted and cannot be untied? These questions are not easy to answer. Different diagrams may describe the same knot. For example, these two knots are in fact the same. If we choose a diagram for each of them, we can find a sequence of Reidemeister moves to pass from one to the other. Using Reidemeister theorem, we can only prove that two diagrams represent the same knot, finding a sequence of moves, but we cannot prove that some knots are truly different. We need other methods to tell knots apart. Here is one such way. Choose three colors, say purple, pale blue and pink. They have nothing to do with color projections. We use them to color broken arcs diagrams. At each crossing, we may see all three colors, which is allowed, or two colors, which we want to avoid, or just one color, which again is fine. We call three coloring of a broken arcs diagram such a choice of colors for each of the arcs, such that at each crossing we see just one color or all the three colors. This diagram of the trefoil knot has nine three colorings because we can freely choose colors for two of the arcs and the third one will be determined by the rule. This diagram of the unknot has just the trivial three colorings because it has only one arc. Also, this diagram of the figure 8 knot has only three three colorings. Can you see why? If we try to color it using two colors, we are forced to use the third one as well. But after that, we get stuck. The fourth arc should be pink according to this crossing and pale blue according to this one. So, only the three trivial three colorings are possible. We can count the number of three colorings of any diagram. Will this number change when we apply Rademeister moves? It is Rademeister move 1. Suppose we have a three coloring of the tangle on the left. On the right hand side, the endpoints must have the same color, because the two tangles are part of a bigger diagram. This gives a three coloring of the right hand side, corresponding to the one on the left. Vice versa, given a three coloring on the right hand side, we can find the corresponding three coloring on the left. So, the number of three colorings on the two sides is the same. That is, Radiomeister move 1 does not affect three colorability of diagrams. Here is Reidemeister move 2. Again, suppose there is a three coloring on the left hand side. Then we can find a unique corresponding three coloring of the tangle on the right. This happens for all three colorings. Here is another case.
Likewise, starting from a three coring on the right hand side, we always find the corresponding one on the left. Rydemeister Move 3 has more cases, but the same holds. Once we fix the colors of three endpoints on both sides, there is only one way to color the rest of the arcs. This means that if a diagram has a three coloring, then each diagram obtained applying Rademeister moves will have a corresponding three coloring. Counting the number of three colorings means to associate a number to its diagram, or in other words, to write a function from not diagrams to numbers. Since this number, the number of three colorings, does not change when we apply Rademeister moves, the function is defined also from not to numbers. We say that the number of recordings is an invariant of knots. We can use this number to tell some knots apart. In particular, the trefoil is different from the unknot, that is, it is truly knotted. There are distinct knots with the same number of recordings. To prove that these knots are distinct, we need other methods. Recoloring was introduced by Fox about 60 years ago, as a simple example for students to understand a more theoretical construction. The first classification of knots was made by physicists in the second half of the 19th century, when Tide filled out the first tables of knots. Today, thanks to more sophisticated theories and to computers, mathematicians compile the tables of knots which can be represented with up to 16 crossings. They are millions and provide a huge database on which to test new invariants and new theories.